The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. And we got markets in positive territory, a little bit of a pullback in the last few minutes, but we still got green across the board right now. S&Ps within a quarter of a point of touching all-time highs. Those all-time highs on the futures made December 28th. We just got to a high of 48, 41, 25. The high on the futures, 48, 41, 50 from December 28th. So we're pushing all-time highs. You back off a bit. Back to a 15-minute chart. You can see a little bit of a pullback from where we were at 8 a.m. this morning. We back off by 10 points. The S&P still positive by 4 tenths percent. NASDAQ 100, growth stocks, man. AI in control this week, you could say. As we have AI with the NASDAQ 100 up 112 points. That's almost 7 tenths percent in the positive. 17,222. And yeah, that's an all-time high on the NASDAQ 100 futures. Dow. 37,834. We're just up about half a percent right now in the Russell, up by about five points, lagging a bit. You take a look at the Russell, you talk about a laggard, man. Up by just five, up by two tenths percent. And boy, no, I just looked at the S&Ps, right? S&Ps are right where we were December 28th. The Russell is what, 160 points where you were? The Russell's a solid 7% lower. Just remarkable the divergence you have going on. Bitcoin. We were talking about it, man. Buy the rumor, sell the news, right? Let's put it back to a daily. There's your daily. Bitcoin gets approved for an ETF on January 11th, and it's been negative action since then. It's lost almost 20% of its value from that spike. 49,435. We're technically positive by 400 bucks on the session, but we're still sitting at a 41,000 handle on Bitcoin. Crude catching a little bit of a bid right now. Overnight. You trade up to a high of 74.50 or about that price level. 74.55 is the exact. We're back a bit, 74.04 in the price of crude. You jump over to gold. We were talking about it yesterday, man. You know, maybe the stars are aligned. Maybe that was your pullback. I was talking about it on the program yesterday morning. And uh, yeah, it's been quite an acceleration. Where did I get off the air? Yeah, at about 2015, you got gold up by $15 right now in the session. We just traded above 2040. You're trading at 2035 in the price of that gold contract. Silver. Up by about two pennies right now, 22.83, and we jump to notes and bonds. And on a day when we have tech stocks accelerating higher, no real move in yields just yet. You got the 10 year negative by two ticks right now. We're dealing with a yield approaching 4.15. So it's a substantial increase right now. We come into a quiet period for the Fed because they come back a week from this coming Wednesday. Okay. They're meeting January 30th and 31st, the announcement. Um, the only real important date, doesn't matter when that beginning ends, uh, it doesn't matter when that meeting begins, I was going to say, it matters when they make the announcement, which is Wednesday, January 31st, they'll make that announcement at 2, press conference to follow at 2.30, so they go into a quiet period, and we've had yields rise to about 4.15%, from what were we, 3.87, 3.9, something like that in the 10-year. You jump over to the dollar index, as we finish the wrap-up here, you got the dollar index, Backing off a bit. Now, where's the dollar? Dollar sitting at 103.40. Okay, you're right back to where you were last Tuesday in the dollar. Where's yields? Yields have continued to risen. Right? Check it out. We got lower price and higher yield since Tuesday. Is that what I was looking at? Yeah, that's Tuesday. Where's the dollar? Yeah, that's Tuesday. Right? Tuesday afternoon. Now, we did get quite a pop from Monday, from 102.60. You really accelerated higher from Monday to Tuesday's action. And there you see the action on Tuesday that really accelerated things. Nonetheless, I think you're going to see some dollar weakness coming in, man. And you're sitting at 103.41, just chopping around where you were since Tuesday, even though we've had yields rise a bit since that price level. But the dollar finishing a positive week, that's for sure, man. You put this thing on a weekly. There's your green bar. It's not slowing down, but where do we sit? We've been talking about it. We're sitting right at that 3A2, man. Keep your eye on it. Got a little bit of volatility on a weekly basis, right? Coming in November 20th. 
We're sitting at 103.40 right now, and you are right at that 382 on the dollar index. We jump over to the VIX. 13 handle on the VIX. We put it back to a 15 minute. I may sneeze here. Oh. I think I shook it out. We'll see. I may sneeze. Uh, 13.65 as this market sucks out some of that volatility from this market down about, excuse me, down about 50 pennies at 13.65 on the VIX. Back to where you were Tuesday as well. All right. What do we got going on? We got some market action. That's for sure. Let's jump around. We'll kick it off with Ford. Why not? You jump over to Ford shares. They're basically flat on the session right now. Quite a pullback for them yesterday. 11.37 down to 11. And you jump over to the headline, you got Ford cutting production of the F-150 Lightning Electric Truck, EVs, man. It is amazing how quickly the narrative has shifted, right? Cut production of its F-150 Lightning Electric Truck. F-150 EV was supposed to be like the, the gangbuster, right? 1,400 employees are going to be impacted as the Rogue Electric Vehicle Center transitions to one shift beginning April 1st. Uh, the company said it expects continued growth in global EV sales in 2024, though it will be less than anticipated. Quite a week or a couple weeks for EVs, right? You jump over to Hertz. They get quite a lift following the news that they're dumping 20,000 electric vehicles. Turns out that's probably the best thing they could do for their business, some of the analysts are saying out there. And we got to jump over to Tesla when we're talking a little bit of EVs because the pain's just not stopping, man. On a day when you have everything trading higher, folks, you got Tesla down another percentage and a half. You're trading at 209. You have one of the biggest car companies out there, Ford, talking about that. Guess what? They anticipated greater demand. They have a demand problem. Tesla's pricing has indicated that for some time. Yeah, so pay attention. All right, the other one we got to talk about is Spirit, man. You talk about some volatility. So, Spirit comes out yesterday with restructuring. They come out today with a little bit of an outlook, I think. Uh, we'll talk about this one, but boy, you jump from 550 up to 750. You're back at 706. What's that, a buck 30? What's that going to be? A 20% pop on the open. Still well off where you were prior to the JetBlue deal getting nixed by the Justice Department. Uh, nonetheless, you're up almost 100% off the lows of yesterday afternoon, man. You hit $8 almost. What do we get to? Seven eighty-two this morning. We've backed off a bit. You're trading at $7. Now, the headline for them out there. They detailed steps to boost liquidity and refinance debt. Okay. Now, they reaffirmed support for the JetBlue deal. I don't even know what's going on there. That deal is not happening. Okay. Not happening at all. Um. Yeah. Nonetheless, what, it, what they did talk about in here is liquidity. I think that had a much bigger impact than them just saying that their deal with JetBlue remains in full force and effect. Now, they're going to get paid almost half a billion dollars by JetBlue if this deal, deal falls through, Okay, which is probably why they're saying that to that degree. As the carrier explores ways to shore up its liquidity. All right. One of the deals they're talking about here is a sale and lease back of their vehicles. Their, their planes, right? You sell the sell the vehicle, get all that cash, and then lease it back. Cash flow-wise, that's a big deal. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about this when we get back. Yeah, Spirit pushed back on Thursday, not pursuing nor involved in statutory restructure. So we'll take a look nonetheless. Spirit trading higher. We got a lot to talk about this morning on Friday, folks. Stay tuned. Don't go away. We'll be right back in three minutes. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. And boy, you got quite an acceleration. We have a little bit of a give back going on, though. We got some negative action going on, extending really since about 8 a.m. Eastern time. You trade up to 48.41.25, as I mentioned, missing those all-time highs on the futures by just a quarter of a point. We backed off about 13 points since then. NASDAQ 100, we hit a high of 17,255. Same area we were at about 6.30 this morning. We backed off a bit as well. We jump around to some of the FANG stocks this morning. Amazon shares, up about 50, 60 cents, maybe 154.14. You jump over to Apple. Quite the resurgence for Apple, man. Look at this. You charge higher yesterday on their upgrade. You charge higher yet again today, extending those gains. We're up by only 20 cents, but you were just above 190.58, right? You back off on a daily. That gap is dealing with 191.73 is where you gap lower from December 29th to January 2nd. Pretty amazing how this stuff happens between the transition from year to year, right? Taxes are important, man. Nonetheless, uh, I mean, we saw how it happened a couple years ago when the Fed started their cutting hiking, excuse me, in 2022. Nonetheless, Apple shares hit 190 today, but you got to get to almost 192 to close that gap. We were just trading at 180, 180, 30, two days ago. Man, that's bonkers, right? You're talking about a company with 15.5 billion shares outstanding, moves $10 over a couple days, $150 billion market cap move. That's why sometimes when they talk about those acquisitions for Apple, uh, something like ESPN, $50, $60 billion. If it was worthwhile, it's almost pennies on the dollar for what they're dealing with. It is pennies on the dollar for what they're dealing with. We jump over to Wayfair. So Wayfair, yeah, you talk about an acceleration. There you go. That's what happens when you're trimming costs in this market right now. You got Wayfair trading up almost, what, 18%? What do we got? Yeah, you got a $50 stock that just almost popped $10. You're going to be up $7, though, technically, almost on the open right now. So what are you talking about? 14%, something like that for Wayfair, and you jump over. Where are we? I just had it. Oh, don't do it to me. I'll find it. Here it is. Ah, we got to jump around. Shame on me. I had multiple different. Here we go. Okay. Wayfair is cutting 13% of their global workforce. Quite a number, man. 1,650 employees, including 19% of its corporate team. So really trimming the corporate team up there. One out of five people in the corporate team getting the ax with a focus on people in management and leadership positions. Kudos to them for making that cut because not often do, um, you know, you always want to trim 
the lower level, but many times the excess could probably be at the upper level, which it looks like is in this case, right? You're trimming 13% of the workforce, but 20% of corporate team. So it's the third restructuring since the summer of 2022, and it's going to save the company about $280 million. Yeah, they reflect a return to our core principles and resource allocation, although persistent Category weakness makes revenue growth challenging. We remain encouraged by the share gains we continue to see. Yeah, and they talk about here you got Hasbro, Etsy, Macy's cutting their workforce. There's a lot of cuts going on, right? I mean, the tech stocks let it off with some of their cuts. Macy's going to plan to cut more than 2,300 employees. That's only 3.5% of their workforce. And it's going to close five stores. Wayfair said the cuts were not related to fourth quarter performance, but rather a proactive move to get the company back to its core structure. Now, yeah, they saw you. You want to talk about a chart, folks? That's a chart for you. <laughs> that is a chart for you. Wayfair up to 369 on the COVID acceleration, we'll call it. Now, pretty interesting, right? How you got these rollovers. Remember, Wayfair market didn't top out till the beginning of 2022. December of 2021. This stock had already pulled back from 369 to 190. And you're sitting at 50 bucks. You're going to be sitting at 58. And where are we back to? Just kind of where we were chopping around. Yeah, what do we got for volume on this thing? I mean, we do have some numbers. The last time they came out with earnings, about six months ago, we got some decent numbers before you really gave it up. But remember, that was giving it up with the market. Remember, market made lows kind of end of October. You got that acceleration. But boy, dicey scenario when you just traded from 70 bucks down to 50. And we will. And meanwhile, you get the market pushing all-time highs. So be careful on that one. You know, they're, they're talking about being proactive. And Wayfair is expensive, man. You know, Wayfair is expensive. I have these conversations with my dad, even going back to when this thing was really accelerating. They're an expensive um, they had a lot of expensive goods out there and a lot of competition in that market. All right, let's see what else we got pulled up here. Yeah, let's talk a little bit of JP Morgan. Why not? They lift CEO Diamond's pay to $36 million for 2023. I wonder how he feels about Elon potentially getting $60 billion to be CEO of Tesla. Uh, long time boss, can't help myself, man. I mean, it is remarkable when you put it in that perspective, right? 36 million for 2023, 4.3% more, and raises for the deputies at 5%. Yeah, his pay package, rightfully so, if you compare the charts of JP Morgan, and you could say the same thing with Tesla, right? But not in the last two years. That's the thing to pay attention. You can't get away from the Tesla conversation right now when you're talking about corporate governance, you're talking about CEO pay, and you're talking about CEO pay for the best in the business in the banks, and that's JP, um, that's Jamie Dimon. 36 million bucks in 2023 is what he's getting there. 1.5 million in salary and 34.5 million of performance based incentive compensation. His total pay up 4.3% when he made 34.5 million. I mean, not a bad couple of years, right? $70 million in pay. And yeah, you take a look at that chart, though. We've talked about it on this program. I mean, check out the acceleration, man. And let's, let's go even a little bit further back, right? You're talking about pushing the all-time highs from 2021. You're talking about well above where you came into 2019. And you compare any of these other banks, man. Look at Bank of America, right? Not even close, okay? Look at Citi. Well, that one gets distorted by different areas in the chart. But Citi, not even close to where you were in 2021. What are we down? 8, 16, 20, you're down almost 40% from the double top you had coming into COVID and where you were in 2021. Wells Fargo, they're a different animal with everything they've had going on, still not back to where you were, right? So rightfully so, JP Morgan, well above that area. Can't help myself with Tesla. Uh, Tesla, maybe Elon deserved that pay package in 2018, but I don't know if he deserves that package right now, man, because remember that what's remarkable is he hit all those accolades on the price target up to 415 and now he's going to be able to get options in the future 
that might gain value back. And he sold them up at that level. Remember that, okay? He is no fool, folks. All right? That Twitter deal was in April of 2022 that started coming out, okay? So what did he do? He got an outlander's pay package. He cashed it in at highs. And now that the stock is cut in half, he's asking for more of a pay package because he sold all his shares at the highs before the company got cut in half. You have to recalibrate the words that you're hearing, folks, because if you actually state the reality of what's going on, it's even more amazing when you put it in that context, right? He sold out at the highs to buy another company for his own personal gain. The company gets cut in half over the last two years. Well, you could make a very real case that he's been distracted. And now he's arguing that because he sold all those shares, he doesn't have enough ownership to care about his job. So they need to give him more shares. It'll probably be worth an extreme amount of money if he doubles the equity and therefore, nonetheless. We're coming back for the open, folks. We'll talk some other equities. Stay tuned. Don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S&P opens up by 14 points, but you see the acceleration there, right? Coming into the opening bell from about 8 a.m. this morning when we missed all-time highs in the futures by a quarter of a point. You trade down almost 20 points, and that was a little bit of selling in the final five minutes before the opening bell. You see the volume spike there, almost 23,000 contracts. We drive it down to 48.22, and we're positive by about 10 points in the S&Ps. 
NASDAQ 100, we're positive by 85 right now. That's about a half a percent in the positive. You get the Dow positive by 85 as well. That's about two tenths percent. You see the give back though, right? Pretty similar action, Dow giving back about 100 points of those gains. We get the S&Ps up only single digits right now, and you get the Russell rolling over to negative territory. And yeah, get ready for some volatility, man. That's what I would say. I mean, you know, no real reason that this market is accelerating higher to the degrees that it is. It's buying, okay? But look at what happened. Look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA just dropped five bucks on the open, man, okay? I often talk to our man Kevin Hinks. He's enjoying some well-deserved vacation this week. You can still check out Fast Market every day at 12 noon Eastern time from the Schwab Network, folks, that we air right here on Tiger TV. Uh, but Kevin always makes the case. I talked to him Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 9.15. We'll talk to him next Tuesday when he's back in the saddle. Uh, we really find out where supply equals demand when the market opens. So pay attention to that right now, man, because we are getting some selling. And we got that selling an hour and a half coming into the opening bell. You had markets pretty exuberant for no exact reason uh, as we got yields sitting at, what, 4.15%. We've had yields rise pretty dramatically. And nonetheless, the market's shaking it off and traded higher over that time. But we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, we got yields even shifting even higher. 4.17? Let's see what we're doing here. Yeah, look at this, man. So what do we got? We got higher yield. We got dollar gaining some strength yet again. Be interesting to see what happens as we get up. Dollar chopped around yesterday, got to an area of about 103.60 on a few occasions before you backed off. We're trading right now at 103.46, up a bit since about 8 a.m. this morning. Yeah, and we got the 10 year right now down six ticks, 111, and uh, you're sitting at 4.17 percent as we come into the quiet period for the Fed. We jump over the gold contract. That action probably not helping gold. Yeah, gold pairs some of those gains from 2040. You're back to 2032. But longer term picture, man, you got to keep your eyes on the longer term unless you're trading, you know, ultra short term. But you got to keep your eyes because it always is the wind at your back, man. No matter what time frame you're trading in, right? If you're in an environment where longer term you have the trend on your side, it's going to be helpful no matter what. And I think longer term right now, there is a big debate over whether we're going for three cuts or six cuts or somewhere in between this year, right? Well, folks, it's about to be February before we know it. And if the only debate is whether we're going for three or six, then the trend is probably going to be to the point where we have yields decreasing and we have dollar weakness. Now, the one kicker in this is, okay, is that, man, we got a lot risk in terms of Red Sea, right? Uh, and that is going to impact a lot more, especially the Red Sea deal, a lot more than it's going to impact us. That's going to potentially weaken their economy. It's going to potentially cause inflation in their economy. Um, now, there's two sides of that. But yeah, I mean, look at the headline on Bloomberg today. Top of the page on Bloomberg. You got another missile fired in another U.S.-owned ship in the Red Sea. Now, where is the good... I want to read a good news story, man, on who are the private companies that are owned for profit that are sending their workers around this path when it's just nonstop, man. Um, ballistic missiles hitting the water near the ship. You better be getting some serious hazard pay, man, to put it lightly, right? Um, they launched two anti-ship anti ballistic missiles at the... Chem Ranger, Chem Ranger, Creek operated tanker, U.S. Central Command said in a statement posted on social media. Um, it's an American owned commercial vessel the same day that Biden acknowledged U.S. airstrikes have not halted. That's, I don't know how. And then you look at the front page of Bloomberg, man. All right. Now, the kicker is, how do you how do you stop something where it could just take a few rebels and a few might not be, you know, a fair representation. But that's what I don't understand on how that ends easy or not. Because I don't see how that ends easily when it's not as simple as like a state-controlled action. It is to a certain degree, but you deal with rebels, man. Um, yeah, so nonetheless, we jump over to crude. You get a little bit of a pop on some of that, but crude. 75 has been the top of this market right now. We're inching back towards that price level. 74.50 was the high early this morning. You put this thing on the daily, and yeah. Pay attention, 75, just above 75, maybe 76, 18, the high we hit December 26, that or thereabouts. You see, though, 75 was an area of 
support going back to November. It became an area of resistance in December, and you've just been chopping around between 70, 75 bucks. You're trading at 74.31 right now for the price of crude. You jump over to Bitcoin, giving up some of those gains. Bitcoin, 41,045. Always interesting as you go into the weekend. Potential for some volatility on Bitcoin. Longer term, yeah, I think Bitcoin's in a good place, man, to go higher. I just do. You know, you've gotten a lot of the bad actors out in terms of FTX, in terms of Binance, making that deal with the Justice Department. Seems like it's ripe for that next big acceleration. But shorter term, you got to remember that you just traded from 15,000 up to 50,000 in just over a year, folks. 15,000 up to 50,000 in over a year. You really had that acceleration take place from about middle of September when you doubled in price. Can't blame anybody that caught that rally early, even if you caught it, you know, the first likes, October 16th, October 23rd. The market starts to rally in November. You still go from 35,000, right, up to 49,000 when the ETF gets approved. Not surprising. Who's, who's the impetus to buy right on the heels? And this is what you want to ask yourself if you're in trades like this, folks, okay? And listen, it happens because you can make the same case with NVIDIA and boy, people have an impetus to buy, right? You could say, who has the impetus to buy NVIDIA at 500 when you just went from 100? Well, people do, okay? But you at least want to ask yourself that question. And they do because they see future growth. Who has the impetus to buy Bitcoin the moment after the ETF gets approved and it spikes to 50,000? 50, well, there are a lot of people making some big cases out there that once they bring in retail traders that you're going to have to have that type of buying because the ETFs are going to accelerate the need for the actual coins themselves. We'll see where that plays out right now because as of right now, you got negative prices um, since that got approved and you're off almost 20% from the highs of Bitcoin at 41,000 right now. If you're taking a longer term picture on Bitcoin, you're probably all right. Still well off where you hit 60, 70,000 almost a couple years ago. You factor in inflation and you could be at 100,000 before you know it in Bitcoin. All right, let's jump around to some of the movers this morning. We got Spirit catching a bid. They're up by about 23.6% for that number. We jump over to Ford. They're down about 8 tenths percent. They're going to be cutting some of the production of their F-150 electric vehicles for Ford. You jump over to Wayfair. Market loves that they are laying off some of their workforce, especially on the corporate side of things. Wayfair up about 12% right now. We jump around to Boeing shares. Boeing down about half a percent. Well off the lows of 197.80 made on Wednesday. We jump over to Apple. Apple shares up by two tenths percent. Microsoft shares up by two tenths. Amazon shares up by two tenths. Meta shares. There you go. Meta up by 1.3 percent. Catching the AI. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets continuing to slide. We got our man Basil Chapman and the Tigers Den. Great point. Options expiration going on today. Third Friday of the month as well. Going to be a really interesting session. Basil's up next, of course, with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Uh, yeah, going to be an interesting session and quite an interesting start, man. As we get markets giving up a lot of those pre market gains from 4841 in the SPs. We've just been chopping around at about 4818 right now. You're positive by single digits. That Russell, be careful that Russell, man, the Russell. Off by 10 points right now. That's half a percent in the red when you got green across the board in the other markets right now, trading at 1926. And as I mentioned, right, you get the S&Ps right back where you were on December 28th. You now have the Russell off 170 points from where you were at that time frame, man. Pretty interesting comparison when you look at it in that context. So jumping back to MetaShares, news out last night, Zuckerberg putting it out in reels in the pop extending today and yeah you jump over to the headline how about spending nine billion dollars on nvidia chips probably the reason why i got nvidia spiking as well right you jump over nvidia before we get into this man yeah they they catch that bit as well they give it up a bit you're still up by one percent you jump over to amd they're up by 1.2 percent as well what i don't understand is how a company is going to compete in this new spectrum where to be competitive as a technology company you're going to need computing power that is very expensive. And so I don't know how that plays out in our future, man. But keep, a, keep an open mind it is what I would say, folks, because if it takes 350,000 H100 graphics cards by the end of this year to be competitive, and this is just on a longer-term facing goal, okay? AI is going to be their biggest investment in 2024, Zuckerberg said yesterday that by the end of this year, the company's computing infrastructure will include 350,000 H100 graphics cards. These are the cards that sell on eBay for 40,000 bucks a pop. Now, if you're getting them in gross, you're probably paying 25 to 30,000. You still do those numbers and you're talking about about $9 billion for those cards this year alone. Right? Woof. Um, they've got the money to do it, though. And this is the company's future roadmap for AI requires it to build massive compute infrastructure, okay? He didn't say how many they already have. That chip did not hit the market until late 2022 in limited supply. And as they mentioned, about 25 to 30,000 is what they're going for. And on eBay, they can push 40,000, even at the low end, that's $9 billion. He says, if you add the other computers and the GPUs in that system, it's going to be equivalent to almost 600,000, okay? Now, AMD is catching a bit, of course, because you have other companies purchasing their new chips. The Instinct MI300X AI computer chips from, from AMD. 
And there it is, the long-term vision for the company, okay? OpenAI in Google's DeepMind unit are also researching AGI, a futuristic form of AI that's comparable to human-level intelligence, right? Artificial general intelligence. How do you compete with something like that when you need that type of computing power? I don't know how it happens, and that's going to change the world, man. And you're going to see a lot of difficult conversations over the next 10, 20 years as companies have the ability to plow billions of dollars into that computing power and no it just becomes difficult right they're going to be gatekeepers for that technology for that computing power and yeah um you know you see the videos of not sure if you saw the video of the tesla bot right folding laundry out there i'll see if i can find that video at the next break before we do the last segment coming up uh, you got a Tesla robot that's folding laundry. And it literally made me think, okay, hold on. This is what's going on. We're, we're all going to have like robot slaves in our homes, right, that are just doing whatever we want. Well, businesses are going to have the same thing, okay? They're going to have robot slaves that are employees. And how does that transition when one man, Mark Zuckerberg, can spend $9 billion on computing power to build an army of bots, robots basically, that act like humans, that are employees like humans, and that he doesn't have to pay anybody else for that. And that the, the, the barrier to entry for that level of investment, if you're first there, how do you catch up? So keep an open mind as we march forward, man, because things are going to have to change when you have the select few controlling these barriers to entry with this type of degree. You know, this is a guy who started one of the most innovative companies in the world out of his dorm room in college. Yes, there's going to be opportunities, and there always will be, folks, okay? I'm not pessimistic to think that once that happens, you can't be a, an entrepreneur, a creator, an innovator, okay? But it's going to be very difficult when you have these companies possessing AI, and you're competing with that without that startup. Nonetheless, it's said, but uh, yeah, not surprising that they are on the AI train. And Zuckerberg probably has a pretty good feel of where the future is going, folks. Uh, AI. Look at me just typing in AI. Uh, Meta shares up by 1.4%, and you jump over to NVIDIA shares, up by 1.1%. We jump over to Google shares, up by 1.3%. Microsoft up by a quarter. They popped higher as well to 398.46. They give up some of those gains. Apple shares up by six tenths. Let's see where we are on the market cap quest for these companies. You got Apple sitting at 2.93 trillion. You jump over to Microsoft shares. 2.9, they're basically tied, exact, 2.9346. Let's see, 2.9346, 2.9324. So what do we got? Microsoft barely in the lead right now. Pretty remarkable, both those companies just under $3 trillion, neck and neck for the biggest companies in the world. What do we got? Who's calling? Excuse me, turn that ringer off, shame on me. Somebody from Newport Ritchie, it's probably a sales call. All right, let's jump back to that gold contract, see what we got going on with commodities. Gold gives it up a bit. And yeah, you got to keep your eye on yields, man. There it is. It's dropping. We got the 10-year up again. We're pushing 4.18, just like that. Pretty interesting. As you come into the quiet period, we've had a lot of Fed speak. We've had a lot of pushback on the expectations for the markets, talking about six cuts. The one thing I will say is that the market gets ahead of itself. Right, And you've probably seen quite a pairing. We are now back to where yields were on November 20th. Okay, It's January 20th. That's two straight months. You got all the way down to the dust. Excuse me. This is where the dollar is, not yields, but they are correlated. Dollar got down to 100.66. We've risen three full points in the dollar. We're right at that 382. So look for a possible rollover, man. And if you're looking for it, Keep your eye on that gold contract because maybe that's the poise to break higher for gold. We're trading at 2029 right now. If you haven't checked out my dad's gold report, folks, great time to do it. It's getting new issues out on Monday. And yeah, we got gold rocking. Dow barely hanging on to gains by just five points right now. Let's see, JP Morgan up by three tenths percent. They're giving their CEO, Jamie Dimon, a raise for this year to the tune of about $35 million. Can you imagine if Jamie Dimon? Now, check this out. You jump over. JP Morgan's worth $483 billion. I think Tesla's worth $650, something like that. Okay? 
They're comparably sized companies, 672, okay? You gotta talk about it in the same context. If, if Jamie Dimon, now it's a growth company, so it differs. Anyway, you get the point. We'll come back. We're not going to talk Tesla, folks. We're going to talk some other equities. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets in positive territory, except for that Russell. Watch out for that Russell. Negative by five on the Russell. S&P is holding on to gains. A little bit of a pullback into the opening bell, but we bounce after that. We're positive by 11 points right now at 48.23. As we mentioned, uh, AI in vogue yet again when you got Meta out there buying $9 billion worth of NVIDIA. $9 billion. I mean, it's remarkable when you look at even the projections of, a, of revenue for this company going back 12, 18 months. $9 billion, one customer. And yeah, nonetheless, you got NVIDIA up by 1.1%. Again, we take a look at crude. Crude right now sitting at 74.50. And you know, it's interesting. I had a call doing my dad's show early in the week talking about the OIH. And you know, it is pretty interesting when you take a look at this OIH. Now, this is the services, okay, in the OIH. And for the OIH, Let's see, where are we talking about here? We're talking about, yeah, this is the Vanek Oil Services ETF. You're talking about Schlumberger is about 20% of that. Halliburton's 10%. Baker Hughes is 10%. Uh, and you go down from there, okay? It's the services, but obviously re related to crude. And check out 
the channel line that we're in, man. And we got that call on Wednesday when we were sitting at about 282. And, yeah, keep your eye on that one, man. You're looking at those services. I know to our man Bud Rawls. Doesn't get much cleaner in channel lines than that, man. And it is right off the 2020 lows, right? You get a little bit low there in 2020. And, really, I just extended that left. We canceled that left extension. You go back to that well-defined channel line on a monthly basis. You can put it on a weekly. It matches up pretty well. A couple outliers, but nonetheless. And what's so cool is, right, check out where we just were, man. So that is what it looks like on a weekly. That's what it looks like on a monthly, okay? And look at what it looks like on like a 15-minute. Look at where we were, 282. You got to keep your eye on those channel lines, man. Uh, so if you're in this, maybe keep your eye on that, which is what we were talking about. Pretty cool how you get that sometimes. It worked out there, but we'll see as it's quite a large channel, to put it lightly, and we're right near that bottom boundary line. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting things off on your Friday. Stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's ready. He's in the Tiger's Den. He's talking about options expiration Friday for an interesting session. Uh, I'm looking forward to Basil's program. And again, thanks for kicking off your Friday, folks. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. We look forward to seeing you back here Monday morning at 9 o'clock in the morning, folks. Have a great one. Stay tuned for Basil.